Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. Uh, Working with Scholar Society members, make sure you guys check your emails. Email went out today. Make sure you guys watch the video that was sent out. You guys should all have that link. Also, everybody should have NDAs. Again, NDAs were sent out to everybody, but it may take a day or two for you guys to get the email. So don't stress if you do not have it. But also still, if you don't have it, make sure you shoot me an email just in case. But everybody should have the email or should have the NDA with the, um, should have the NDAs uh, coming pretty soon. So that should be out the way. Everybody should have theirs. Everybody should be taken care of as far as Merkle Scholar Society. Shouldn't nobody be waiting on anything right now. Talked about books. Books are going to be going out. We got another week for that. Books are getting ready and getting prepared. So you guys will be getting books. Um, that's why I make sure you guys respond to the emails so you can fill out that information. I sent out emails already, but I'm just covering all bases here. Also, the live yesterday, I talked about the app. So we have the Merkaba Scholar Society app. This app will be coming out. You guys should have the app and link to the app by Monday or before Monday. It depends on how quick we can get it out, but everything looks good. There will be no delays. We'll have it on Android and iPhone. We will have our own app without any issues, any problems. Push notifications so nobody will miss anything. SMS messages so nobody will miss anything. All that's going to be taken care of. So like I said, I'm putting a lot into Merck with Scholar Society. I've been working hard, getting everything together. Uh, the logos, shirts, all that stuff, you guys are going to start seeing all that pretty soon. It's a lot coming up, a lot going on for Merck with Scholar Society. I still want you guys to register on Merck with Academy. Make sure you use a different email as well so we can have that platform as well. But I decided to take it upon myself and separate uh, and make sure we have our own site, our own app for Merck with Scholar Society so there's no issue. So um yeah, it's a different, a bunch of different logo options you guys are going to be seeing. Um, a lot of people get the first one confused. People see it, they say uh, devil worship, witchcraft, what have you, because they're stupid. They don't know what the logo means. Uh, so <laughs> we got a lot coming up. So um, make sure you guys check your emails and stay tuned uh, to the information. Uh, Merkaba Academy, uh, make sure you guys are paying attention to your emails as well. I sent out Never Pay Again members. Uh, uh, emails so you guys still have an opportunity to take advantage of that before that link expires which is going to expire tomorrow so again uh, monday is the last day for phase two so phase two is ending so you guys have until monday to get in at this phase at this price for Merkaba scholar society so check your emails also make sure you got the link links is in the description for you guys to take advantage so take advantage by monday that price is going to drastically change on monday so you guys got a shot to get in phase two. Phase three will be the final phase. And then you have to get voted in after that. So I'm just doing this through these phases because there's a lot still going out, a lot still being updated at this time. So you guys got an opportunity to get in. You guys will get the welcome email. You will also get the NDA email once you get in and then you'll get the link for the video and everything else. Also, uh, Merkaba Scholar, uh, Scholar Society app. Only members will have the app. You guys will get a link to download that. And even if you get your hands on it, you can't register and get, uh, you know, approved unless you're a member. So it will be in the app store, though. So um, make sure you guys uh, pay attention to your emails and it's watching your emails. So I put a couple of videos on the biblical Bible series, the rundowns. Uh, make sure you guys check those videos out. The next new videos coming up is going to be part of the Bible series. But we also uh, before that, we're going to get into the. Uh, the Gnostic video. So I'm going to put this uh, DVD out for everybody. It's going to really be mostly pertaining to Mercury Pascal Society because we're going to be getting into this a lot with our information, but I want everybody to understand that. So when people come in, um, you guys will have that prerequisite knowledge. So the next big video will be on the Gnostic faith. You guys will see that video coming soon. It's a lot of information we got to get into on that. And it's going to be deep. So uh, the reason why is because it's a lot that's in the Gnostic text that is so real and um you got to understand it uh you know as far as you know the esoteric understanding uh, behind it how much it pertains to what's really going on in the gnostic faith you know these people really understood and the stories are more easy to understand and see the parables in those stories um jesus is shown more as his in his dualistic side and the gnostic uh, text him being good and evil you see that more in jesus jesus remember we've seen that with god in the old testament in the bible we see god doing evil stuff god says evil comes from him he created evil he created good so on and so forth god does evil things uh god do, does good things we see the yin yang of god in the old testament in the bible so with the uh, gnostic text they try to show you that with uh with jesus as well
So it's a big deal to understand that duality with that whole concept of Christ and its dualistic nature, which Christ represents that dualistic nature of masculine and feminine energy, which you guys see a lot. Um, this is why he appears androgynous with the long hair, what have you, even though your Bible says it's an abomination for a man to have long hair. So I wanted to go through some of the biblical videos first so you guys can be caught up with uh, the biblical Bible series and, you know, understand uh, what we've been talking about throughout the series. So we're going to get into that information here. Uh, but yeah, stay tuned for the Gnostic uh, uh, DVD to get into that understanding a lot deeper. I touched on it in a few previous videos, but it's a lot more to it. But understanding uh, the King James Version of the Bible we have now is really important. But I gave you guys with the Biblical Bible series a lot of the esoteric understanding of the Bible and how I broke that down. So I'm going to give you a few excerpts, uh, uh, clips from those uh, videos here that, that are really, you know, huge points uh, as far as the Biblical Bible series. And we'll continue that series because we're going to knock out the Old Testament pretty soon. The videos are being edited now. It's a lot. I already, I already basically recorded them. It's a lot of really deep information that gets really good. Uh, because there's a lot of people don't understand about the Old Testament. So we're going to get into that. But um, yeah, I appreciate everybody who has, uh, you know, been keeping up with information. So yeah, a lot of people have questions. A lot of people hit me up about Mercury Pascal Society. Again, links in the description. I can't really hold off too long. I've held off long enough. So I'm giving, this is why I did the phases to get everybody a shot. So um, it's up to you guys to take advantage of it. Like I said, we move and we doing big things. This is going to be completely different and a lot more uh, detail uh, than before. Like I said, I have a lot more time to take care of this stuff. So I'm putting more energy into this. Also, I've learned from uh, the mistakes of, you know, Merkaba Academy and everything I was trying to do there. Not saying that, uh, you know, I was trying to do anything wrong or what have you. I rushed a lot of things, but I wasn't prepared for the unprofessionalism from some of these companies I've been working with. And uh, dealing with WordPress and, and all those issues, I was expecting those guys to have a fix or a remedy to a lot of these plug-in problems, but they, they don't. Uh, and everything is just wait, wait, wait. And they don't really realize, you got, I got a lot of people waiting on me and people emailing me and people having issues, you know, with the site. So I'm trying to fix that. I mean, a login issue should not be fucking that easy, uh, hard to fix. Uh, so like I said, I took it upon myself to fix a lot of those issues and I'm still working on it. But at the same time, I'm waiting for WordPress. So to get around all that, because I don't want no issues with Mercury Scholar Society at all. This is why, you know, I'm jumping to the app now. And, and you know, we have a professional app designer, somebody who's going to professionally, it's been being professionally done. Uh, it's no way you can do all this on your own. You know, I've tried it before, it's tough. So now I got a whole team that's working on it for me. And that app will be done. And I showed you guys in the seen a promo. Uh, just a little clip of it, but it's going to be basically almost like Instagram. So uh, for Merkaba Scholar Society, so we'll have our timeline. We'll be share information. Uh, you know, you'll you'll be able to do you'll be able to do basically everything you could do on Instagram. Uh, so you guys will see how that how it goes. Except for you know, we'll have that whole um, message to message feature and a lot more other stuff that's cool that uh, Instagram doesn't have. But at the same time, I, I can have it tweaked and catered and I can tweak things here and there to have it fit, you know, what we need for Merkaba Scholar Society. So you guys stay tuned for that. Um, uh, it's going to be cool. But I want it to be easier for people to have uh, access to the information. And, you know, a lot of you guys are not seeing a lot of things because of, you know, the shadow ban or what have you. This way with the app, there's no issues. You guys won't miss, miss anything. Uh, you can get, um, you know, direct information as well as the SMS messages and everything like that. It's going to be a lot easier, much, much better. Like I said, I appreciate everybody that's participating on this. Again, this is something that we should have, you know, as like-minded individuals that's really into this information. I love doing the lives on YouTube. I've been doing them a lot, but you know, at the same time, you get a lot of boo-boos in there. You see what happened last night, a bunch of Christians jumping in. And uh, you know, I, I, my patience is very thin for that type of shit, as you guys can see. Uh, when I do the lies, I'll be just upset because it just, it just bothers me that fucking grown ass men and women still believe in such nonsense. Um, and to, to jump on there and talk about shit, that's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. Uh, it's, it's crazy, but, um, yeah, uh, I want to be able to do lives without having to deal with these people, uh, hopping in there with the, um, wrong information or what have you. Um, and I always tell people, you know, I, I've, I've been doing this research for for decades, man. Like it's, I, I don't, I don't do this shit on some, you know, trying to be better than nobody type shit or anything like that. Like you're talking to a truly obsessed man. 
you know, <laughs> I was obsessed with this shit for a long time. Man. It's, it was, it really bothered me, you know, for a long time. I couldn't shake it. It's every single day. It was a daily thing to where I'm thinking about this knowledge and this information. And there's no way, you know, when you start opening those doors, as you guys know, uh, of research and um, you start getting into it. I mean, it, it just, it drives you. So, you know, for decades for me, it, it, it drove me. It drove me to travel the world. It drove me to learn different languages. It, it drove me to read a shitload of books and um, to get this information. So usually when I'm talking to Christians or any religious person, I always convey this information to them to get them to understand like um, there's so much because like, unless you've done this, you don't know. Because people just think in your mind is you read a book. And and nowadays it's, oh, you watch the YouTube video. I'm old school. I've been here long before you. I've been doing this long before YouTube. But um, for the, for the most part, the people who know, you know, you understand how much it takes to get to this point. You understand? Like, it, like I just look back at all the research and reading and time it took to, to come to this point with clear understanding. Now, it's one thing to watch a YouTube video or watch some shit online and think, you know, you know, because when you get asked questions, you only know what you saw in the video. You understand? You can't answer a lot of those questions unless you did the actual research. And this is what happens with a lot of these people. They regurgitate a lot of information that they've seen from videos online or something that they read possibly online. And if you don't, if you didn't do that research on your own, you, you're going to be losing out. I try to give you guys everything leading up to my point, you know, pictures, videos, I read from, from books or what have you to give you a lot leading up to a major point that I make uh, before I make it. Because I don't like to just say outrageous shit like, you know, they proved that Moses parted the sea, uh, you know, crazy stuff. So um, I like to, you know, give you guys more proof than just saying things, you know, uh, versus what a lot of these other guys is doing out here. They're just talking and saying shit. So I try to give you guys more proof. But. You know, it's a uh, it's a lot to get into. It's a lot to get into with, with this information. But I want to get into this uh, to the rundowns uh, and get you guys caught up with uh, the Biblical Bible series. It's a cool series, a lot of information. So let's get into some of that information so you guys can be caught up. But yeah, check this out. I'll see you guys next video. Link is in the description for anybody that's still trying to join Merkaba Scholar Society. A lot of y'all sending me emails. It's not too late. As I said, three phases. We in phase two. Phase two ends Monday. You don't want to have to pay the price on Tuesday. Uh, so just make sure you take care of it now while it's low. I'm not changing that price. It's not going to go down. I gave Never Pay Again members an, uh, a, a fair deal. And it's up to you guys. I promise you, you're going to regret it if you don't take advantage of it. It's a lot we're going to do. It's a lot. So uh, it's a lot I'm keeping under wraps. So uh, for everybody that's in, you'll be in. You'll be able to, uh, to participate. So, um, yeah, just, you know, stay tuned. Make sure you guys check your emails. Never pay again. Members, check your emails. Record by Scholar Society members, check your emails. I send out a lot of emails. And understand at the same time, I'm, I'm saying check your emails, but you might not get the email until tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. I have no control over that. I pay multiple sources to send out emails. I'm paying a lot of people to send emails for me. And it's just like, I don't understand how this shit works where people can't get an email as soon as I send it. It's just dumb. Some people get it. I'm sending emails to thousands of people. You guys got to understand this. But uh, some people get the email same day and some people don't get it until days later. It's just fucking weird how this shit works. It's something I want to get around. And the way the push notification uh, thing is going to work, people will get uh, direct uh, messages um, immediately. So it won't be no delay in days uh, for information. So, yeah, whole point of this. But, yeah, let's get into this video. Thanks for watching, guys. But trust me, as we go on through this series, you'll see what I'm talking about. Step by step. If you watch all my, my videos and follow my series, you'll see as we start digging into different things, we see how the Bible comes into play and how it fits with ancient Kemet. They are trying to reveal something to us, especially in ancient Kemet, which is why when we dig deep into the Bible, it's going back to Kemet because it's a lot it's trying to reveal to us. Now, one of the toughest things is going to be really getting people to see the pattern of the Bible and how when you're going through history, how they took different pieces out of history and put it into the Bible. The whole notion, as I talked about before, of the Bible being as old as they tell us, you got to get that shit out your mind. Once you get that out your mind, understand that the Bible is not as old as they're talking about. 
as I talked about before, you're not going to get it being older than the 4th century BCE. And that fits with everything as far as with the Greeks giving us the Bible and everything we've seen biblically uh, from their history and from, you know, actual real history. So when you look at that sort of uh, biblical history, as far as the sense of understanding that when it's talking about the whole Hebrew Israelites going out and conquering and everything like that, it's not the Hebrews. And when you can go back and trace those so-called battles and then, uh, you know, put them with actual Greek battles and wars, you can see what they was talking about. As I talked about in uh, ancient history one and two, we can see what they did. But those patterns, things like that is how you really start digging into the premise, the true point of the book, which we're going to get into. And, um, you know, really, really having it open up your eyes as to where the Bible is going. The key was in Saturn, Satan one and understanding about the garden and how the book starts off, which we're going to get into and really go deeper into all of that and all those different aspects. We're going to also use, of course, the Masonic Bible that I have. We're going to get into that, use that book as well. This is going to help us really differentiate from a lot of different things. Now, the Masons ain't stupid. They didn't make it obvious that their Bible is different from ours because that would be too easy for them to just, you know, uh, show us that. You have a Masonic Bible that's different from an actual King James Version. It's subtle things, and we'll, we'll touch on that. But getting into the books from the beginning and really breaking down book by book, this is the only way you will truly understand what I talk about and truly understand what's going on and uh, how all this stuff fits and uh, fits in with all reality. So when you get through the Bible, which I understand it's tough for people to just read it, Genesis to Revelation, which is why I'm doing a series. It's tough for people to really focus on it while they're reading. It's a lot of different things people don't understand. It's a lot of things that will confuse you in the book, which is why we're going through this entire series, book by book, Genesis to Revelation. And let's get into it. So we're really going to be getting into uh, the Bible. As I said, we're going to um, really focus on Sonic Bible, really getting into and understanding uh, the King James Version and, you know, what that entails and really understanding why this book was made and what this really is. So the science aspect, when they give us in the beginning, talking about space, the pitch blackness of creation out in space, and you have, you know, God speaking. And when you get into the frequency, we're going to be doing this touching in and out of previous DVDs. Another reason why I released all the videos. If you've seen them, this is going to make a lot more sense to you. You'll be really caught up. But as we talked about in energy and frequency DVDs about pitch blackness in the beginning, you know, so you had words speaking. God said, let there be light, so on and so forth. And it's just giving you consciousness, creating this energy and vibration and frequency, which is what brings things into physical existence from energy to the elements, to, to elements, uh, to atoms, to elements, to give us these different particles or what have you that's going to make up the matter and everything else, everything that we talked about. So it's giving you that subtly in Genesis. And then you have the main thing, which is the first creation story in Genesis 1, when God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And I broke that down and I told you guys about how this is where you have our true essence, the true, our true essence and what we really are outside of this physical form, which is both masculine and feminine energy. So in Genesis, when it's talking about let us make man in our image after our likeness, it is just the creator, our energy, the creator speaking to itself, plain and simple. So it says male and female created he, them. And as I pointed out, he is gender neutral. That was well known back in the um, 17th century, 19th century, 18th century. Everybody knew he was gender neutral. They just x that out after the 1800s to where, you know, we, we was left confused. So he is gender neutral. So when the saying he created man in his image and the image of God created he, him, male and female created he, them. So it's basically saying the essence or true energy created, you know, this is the creation of our soul, our energy, what we are from that energetic uh, feel down to just us coming into physical existence and us being split, plain and simple. So when you're getting into this in Genesis one, this is what it's talking about. Just the creation of 
the heavens and the, uh, the earth without really getting too much in detail and the creation of our spiritual energy. And from that spiritual energy, how we was then formed into uh, flesh, into man and women, as it's given us in uh, Genesis 2. So Adam being formed or man being formed from the dust of the ground, alluding to us being made of space dust and God breathing into his nostrils the breath of life, symbolic of the soul or dualistic energy being put into physical form, which again, they got from Kanun, fashioning man on the polished wheel and the whole uh, soul breath uh, analogy from ancient Kemet. Again, we see it clear as day in ancient Kemet where a lot of this stuff is coming from. But at the same time, the science behind it all as well, when getting into the whole metaphor of atom being, you know, an atom. Adam is the atom, as I talked about. Eve, which means before, it's just alluding to the splitting of atom. Atoms have ribs. So, you know, Eve coming from Adam's rib is just basically saying, uh, you know, the rib of an electron orbiting the nucleus of an atom or what have you is a rib that orbit is a rib and that's what basically give you know the creation of the first being which would be woman so it's saying eve which means before came before man first being on this planet is a woman not a man when you understand what it's talking about metaphorically so just touching on this stuff because it's going to lead into a lot of stuff that we haven't talked about but we got to get through this as well but you have this story, creation story, and man being created, and then us, you know, being on the earth and everything is all well and good. And then we have, we know what happens with the uh, Garden of Eden story with the serpent and everything like that, as I broke down, being metaphorical, speaking about the separation, the fall of man to the lower brain. And uh, does it really give us what happened with that whole thing but later on in the bible it does which we'll touch on of course so we understand again the serpent coming into the garden and tempting eve which eve would, rep would represent the uh the negative energy you know she's the yin and there's also so much more that we can point to uh, as far as eve and the woman pointing to the serpent as i talked about in ancient kemet in the queen's chamber of the great pyramid when you look at the the direction that it's pointing through through the little opening uh from the queen's chamber that line is pointing directly to the constellation of draco and we know the other from the king's chamber is pointing to uh sirius so you have it's given us as i talked about the high and low hemispheres of the brain, which the pyramid represents the brain. You have the upper and lower hemispheres of the brain, king and queen's chamber, the woman, which will represent the uh, reptilian lower brain, porting to the Draco constellation and the um, in space, and that is lower brain, and then the higher brain pointing to Osiris or Sirius or Orion, which is why you have Osiris combining Sirius and Orion together to give us that higher brain. So, bam, we have it right there. And then the crazy part about all that is that's actual anatomy. That's, that's our brain. So, you know, if it wasn't for the cloth that she found inside, you know, the basket, they wouldn't have been able to tell it that it's a Hebrew child. They look just alike. And just like in the movie, the same thing in the Bible, it says that Moses became a prince, meaning that he could blend in with the ancient Egyptians. Plain and simple. So it still goes back to the same question. Like, how would you know who's, if they look alike? And in the Bible, it says that Moses became a prince, meaning he had to look like the Egyptians in order to, to blend in for her to pass him off as her son. Same thing in the movie, look alike. So how is it? You have the order that has been given to go and kill all the men. Think about it. Kill all the men that's born and leave the woman alive. How would you know? How would you be able to tell? And it says, Exodus uh, 1, 9, it says here, And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. I mean, think about that. How? So if they are more and mightier than the Egyptians, how did they allow the Egyptians to basically put them into bondage if they are more and mightier? So you got to understand what it's saying here, who it's talking about. 
Now, when you read it and you understand, you understand it's the Greeks talking about the Egyptians. It's saying, hey, they are more and mightier than we. We have to basically do something to them. We have to go ahead and get rid of these Egyptians. When you understand the parable in Exodus with a saying. So we know, again, if you have the numbers, this is not, you know, modern day where, you know, uh, we wear all different clothes. It's easy to tell who's who today. We're talking about thousands of years ago. First of all, one, if you have the Egyptians enslaving, enslaving these Hebrews, I mean, they look alike, according to the book, according to the movie. But the Egyptians wear. They barely wore anything. It would be very easy as a Hebrew to go ahead and snatch the garment or get a white cloth and put it over yourself and patch stuff off as an Egyptian. They look alike, according to the movie and the book. So how would it be hard? This argument still, it goes into the whole Hebrew Israelite argument as well. Them saying again that, oh, the, uh, the Hebrews that was enslaved and Kemet was black. And remember, this is one of their whole arguments of them hating the Egyptians is them saying, well, you have black Egyptians enslave black Hebrews of the black people. But if they was black, how could you tell? If their numbers was more, does it make sense? Any way you slice it, it does not fit. Now, it's a reason why, as we'll get into. So I'm from Philly, out here in Vegas, and I walk around. I can't tell, you know, one black person if they're from here in Vegas or if they're from Texas or from, they could be from Philly. We look the same to me. So, you know, this is now, this day and age. So you're talking about, you know, thousands of years ago. There's no way. There's no way you could tell. So nobody would be able to look at the person and tell. So that whole situation should have been a lot more different. It shouldn't have been as if they was able to say, look, you know, this guy's a Hebrew and, uh, you know, point the whole thing out and then, you know, go attack. If that's the case and you're in a situation where they're killing all the, the freaking Hebrews, well, it's real easy to change if you look just like the people who don't kill it. You know, it's crazy, but they can't say definitively that the um, Egyptians is black. Because then we're the greatest civilization that ever lived. They can't say definitively that the Hebrews is black because then we're the, cho the chosen people. We God's chosen people, you know, everything like that. But they give us the movies showing them white. They give us the depictions showing them white. Hebrews white, the ancient Egyptians white. So it don't matter, you know. The chosen people now, image of white people. Greatest civilization ever lived, image of white people. This is how they do it. Don't got to speak about it in the book. Just show the pictures, show the movies, and get people into the thinking that well, it's just a movie. But this is what they stamp. We've seen the whole thing with um, the Nefertiri bus and them basically saying this is what she looked like. So they can do stuff like this and give validity, you know, because this is what they're doing. This is what this whole thing is about. Them giving validity to the Hebrews in some capacity. Them talking about them, saying that this is what happened, they, they existed. That's the whole reason why. This whole thing is here to just try to get validity to the people, you know, but it gets much deeper than that. You got to understand that you had the Greeks create a people out of thin air, out of thin air. So they know eventually at some point in their plan and their agenda, they will have to create these people. These these Israelites will have to come from somewhere. Now, as I talked about in ancient history series. And uh, many other videos as well. We understand what happened during Hellenization and the whole wars of the Diodoki. Them basically going into those territories that was Egyptians. There were African people in there, Egyptians, black people. They had to go. Plain and simple. They had to get them out of Israel because Israel was a part of the plan. They had to go. So what you had was them indoctrinate those Africans. The people who was there sent them out teaching into other parts of Africa, what have you, which is why you have all this uh, information out there and people talking about, oh, you know, you have, uh, you know, the Hebrews going back you know, hundreds of years to these Africans. This is what was going on. We know Hellenization was them spreading this doctrine and they had Africans doing it as well. You know, once, uh, you know, the whole generational time passed and they had indoctrinated, indoctrinated the children and had them passing it down. So. That happened. You had finally, you know, most of the uh, Africans, the black people in Israel gone. What the Greeks did, they moved their people into Israel. Plain and simple. You might as well call them 
sacrifice. You know, they basically was sacrificing these people when you understand, you understand in a second. But brought these people in Israel from Greece. This is what they do. We know when they come in and take over land, they bring their people when they set up shop, game over. You know, and then when you go and you start looking at the uh, history of the Jews in Greece, which we know the oldest Jewish synagogue is supposed to be in Delos in Greece. But we also have the Romanite Jews who supposed to have spread throughout Greece and other parts of uh, Europe for over 2000 years. They're supposed to have existed for over 2000 years. These uh, Romanite Jews, you had them as well. You know, be indoctrinated and get this whole teaching about Judaism coming into Greece and going into other places as well. So then you had indoctrination, you had Hellenization go on and you had then the Greeks basically go out into, you know, the so-called Middle East and bring back Arabs and bring them into Israel to basically mix in with the Greek people. And I talked about this. The reason why they look mixed is because they are. When you look at the Greeks today, look at what they look like. They look like Arabs. They look like Greeks. They look like a mix. They went out and indoctrinated these Arabs, brought them in to Greece to mix so they can create the Hebrew Israelites. Plain and simple. So that's basically what they did. They got the Arabs, brought them in, mixed them in with these Greeks. Plain and simple. Created this Hebrew, this Jewish race of people. They had to do it that way. Of course, they couldn't mix with black people, with the Africans, because we're dominant genes. We would show up and people would know, hey, the chosen people are black. So that's out the way. You can't just use Greeks because people will say, well, they're Greeks. Plain and simple. You can't, you know, put yourself in these uh, Hebrew shoes because you're Greeks, not Hebrews. This is not a Hebrew story. It's a Greek story. That will be obvious. So, and we're going to talk about in Leviticus who the uh, Arabs really are, but got the Arabs, brought them in, mixed them, and boom, you had the sacrifice. Because that's basically what they are. You know, these people were sacrificed, the sacrificial lamb, and this is basically they eat the, the whole lamb uh, for Passover uh, as a sacrifice, not realizing that they are the sacrifice themselves. And that's what Holocaust mean. it means burnt offering or sacrifice. They were created to be sacrificed, plain and simple. So, you know, to give validity to these people, this is what they had to do. And, you know, these people was created to be sacrificed. And you have the real Jews, the ones who are really Greeks, as I've shown you guys. When you look at the ones that's in power, the ones with the beards, the reason why they have these beards to hide their real pale white faces that's what they look like. Clear as day, you can see, and nothing but a white man with a beard. Plain and simple. That's all it is. They were sacrificed. Millions of people sacrificed so that so that they can give validity to these Jews and create a uh, Jewish nation. Plain and simple. So when you go back and you understand what I was talking about, the Romanite Jews, it says here, a majority of the Jewish population of Greece was killed in the Holocaust after Axis powers occupied Greece during World War II. They deported most of the Jews to Nazi concentration camps after the war. A majority of the survivors immigrated to Israel, the United States, and Western Europe, the United States, and Western Europe. Today, there are still functioning Romanite synagogues in Chalix, which represents the oldest Jewish congregation on European ground in Ionia, Athens, New York, and Israel. So there it is right there, plain and simple. Those people were allowed to be indoctrinated and to, you know, uh, basically grow in success just to be sacrificed. That was their whole purpose to be sacrificed. So, you know, when you look at it, it all makes sense. You could start putting it together at this point because then you go back. You go back into Genesis. Remember the grandfather, the originator of the Hebrew Israelites is who? Abraham. From where? Ur. Ur of the Chaldees, which is where? Mesopotamia, Iraq. So now it all makes sense. And you understand why they did that. They had to make it as if the originator was from Iraq. Because they knew they went out there to the Middle East, got those Arabs, brought them in to Israel and into Greece and let them mix. So now later on, you know, people can say, well, they're not just Jews. 
not just Greeks, they mixed. Oh, they do have some Iraqi in them. They do, they do have some Arab in them when you look at them. Giving validity to the Bible that Moses, excuse me, Abraham must have been from Mesopotamia because you have these Arab looking, Greek looking, mixed looking people who are the so-called Hebrews. It's easy when you're paying attention, when you look at it. So when you look at movies like Schindler's List and these movies, just like the Exodus is made to give these people sympathy, plain and simple, no matter uh, which role you play in, whether they are the Jews looking white or the uh, the Nazis or what have you, it's, it's the same, plain and simple. Now, in Schindler's List, I mean, if you've seen the movie, it's, it's you know, showing them black and white, but you can't really tell these people apart if they wasn't uh, dressed a certain way. They have on a Nazi uniform. You know, the people who's doing all the killing and shooting, the so-called Nazis, look just like any one of those so-called Jews. I mean, Oscar Schindler with that news looked more Jewish than some of the people who's supposed to be Jews in the movie.